I, I was then seen by Harry Saltzman and Cubby Broccoli, who were looking for a Bond girl. I didn't know anything about it. I wasn't available, you know. I, I, I wouldn't have gone up to be a Bond girl anyway. And um, my agent got a call from Cubby saying, um, I, we've just seen Jane in the Anedian line. We want to bring her in. And he said, well, she's not available. She's signed up to the BBC. And so he told me, my agent told me, and he said, look, that's, that's good news. Obviously, they really liked you, but, you know, you're not available. The following week, another episode comes out. And now he gets a call from Harry Saltzman. Nobody realized the two guys weren't talking to each other at the time. And oh, no. so course, Harry yeah. um, managed to persuade my agent to have me come in and meet him. So I came in to meet him, knowing that I wasn't available. And I had my hair, um, I'd always been told, because I had my hair sent apart long, and I sat on it, it was so long. And I was always told when I took my <laughs> hair off my face and put it up, you know, in a bun or something, that I looked quite different. So I thought, oh, well, I'll just stuff my hair up in a hat and then when I come in and take my coat off, I'll take my hat off and my hair will come tumbling down. So that's what I did. And I immediately got the role. Immediately. Like, Amazing. And then Harry took me across the street and said, I need you to come and meet my partner, Cubby. So I went across the street to Cubby's office. And they proceeded to have a huge argument, a huge row, actually, <laughs> about who had discovered me first. And I, like a schoolgirl, I said, excuse me, you both watched the television at the same time. At which point, <laughs> the secretaries took me by the arm and said, come and have a cup of tea. And I, <laughs> okay. And I, so I was, I was squirreled away. They had an all-out fight. They called my agent. Um, my agent then spoke to me on the phone and said, look, I know you don't really understand what's going on here, but, um, just do me a favor, come over to the office. So the office was five minutes away. I had a little Volkswagen, a beetle. I got in it and I was in Mount street, you know, posh part of London. Mm -hmm. And I backed it into slowly, but surely into Harry Saltzman's Rolls Royce. Oh yeah, God, I did. Jane. I did. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I And I turned out, and uh, hopefully I said sorry. I then went to my agent and parked there in, in Soho, and he said, this calls for a gin and tonic. Well, you know, I was 20. I don't think I drank gin, um, but I did that night, that day. I mean, and, and he said, look, I'm going to try and persuade the producer of the Anedon line that to let you out for a couple of weeks so you could at least start the Bond film, come back, finish the Anedon line, and then go do the Bond film. Well, the producer was the one who had, of course, discovered me because he was the one, you know, who had decided I would either do that role once or the whole series. And his name was Peter Graham Scott. So my um, my uh, agent said, Peter, because Peter said, no, I own her. You know, I own her. No, I'm not going to let her go. Da, da, da. And um, then Peter's, um, the, the, my agent said to Peter, well, talk to your wife about it. So he talked to his wife and his wife said, Peter. Don't you understand? You will always be known as the person that discovered Jane Seymour. Because if she does a Bond film, she'll become much more famous. Smart so woman. the next day, that's what happened. I went I to know. America, to New Orleans, um, when I was 20 or 21. And I was mugged, actually. I was mugged oh at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Bourbon Street. So that was my first... Um, in Welcome to America. Oh. Yeah. And uh, then when I tried to go to Jamaica, they stopped me in Atlanta and told me I didn't have the right visa for America. For, for you know for transit, but I did have a visa that would allow me to go out and work. So mm -hmm. I I stupidly said that's stupid and almost got arrested. But you know actually I did. Did you? <laughs> did so, you? Well, they pulled me to a special room and interrogated me, and and I remember in tears saying, "If you if you if you like James Bond, you better let me get on that airplane." I said, "What, what, what, what do you mean, James Bond?" I said, "I'm in a James Bond film." And don't let me on that airplane, there won't be a movie. And then they said, okay, well, just this once, but don't ah. do it again. I went, okay. And of course, I had all the costumes in, a lot of the costumes in my in my baggage because they'd asked me to bring the costumes out. So there would have been a problem.